assalamu alaikum guys uh, today we are going to be start with the column basis this will be the third chapter third uh, part of it in which we are going to be discuss today uh, the movement column basis so the base plate adjusted subjected to the movements first of all today we are going to be discuss this one for this uh, uh, part so the procedure for the design first of all that's very important for the procedure we are going to be start with the eccentricity because in the movement base base plates those are subjected to the movements the very you can say important factor is eccentricity e that is from the known value of pu and mu determine the bearing stresses by selecting some reasonable a2 over a1 ratios so if you once going to be calculating your e this eccentricity can be calculated with the known values of pu and mu so how you get that we are known with the formula of the mu our mu is equal to pu into e so your pu into e so from here if the pu and mu are with you so you can take this pu over here so mu over pu will be equal to this eccentricity e so in this way this will be your input data and later on in the second step what you have to determine you have to determine the bearing stresses okay so fp you need to determine by selecting some reasonable a2 over a1 ratios this fp can be calculated by using this formula that we have been discussed have discussed already so here 0.855 cfc prime a1 over a2 whole square under root this value should be less than equal to 1.75 cfc prime then in the third step you have to calculate approximate area of the base plate required as under this approximate area is going to be including the formula pu plus 10 mu in meter units divided by fp this fp will be equal to this value that you have been already calculated okay so here in this formula there is a mistake uh, the uh, already in online session i have told you this is a2 over a1 so in this formula the ratio is required not the independent individual values of a1 or a2 is required the ratio of a2 over a1 let's suppose we are starting with 2 okay double the area this is the least requirement that the area of the concrete foundation should be at least double than the area of the movement base plate okay so this will be going to be used so let's suppose if the least uh, requirement we are considering the assumption we are considering more than that any value you can take for the ratio of a2 over a1 so you can use any ratio suitable ratio of area of the concrete pad divided ratio of the area of the concrete pad to the area of the base plate so this ratio is required to be input over here and finally once you are getting fp mean the bearing stresses you can input in this equation to get a1 so this a1 will be again your uh, design parameter it will be helpful to calculate the design parameter in the later steps then the fourth step is you have to assume a plate size n into b reasonably depending upon the amount of eccentricity of the load usually n is taken as high as two times the eccentricity when anchor bolts are used so th this is a general criteria but we can use any one okay so it doesn't matter because we have to be provide the anchor bolts okay so if the eccentricities be there do you are known with the eccentricities so we are taken double than that but generally what we can do or what we are doing the general practice is that we have a1 so what we can do we can take square root of it so for the square base plates whatever the uh, value is with us so after taking the square root the equal value we are providing and later on we are checking it with the eccentricities if the 2e the individual values of b and n should be greater than this 2e double than the eccentricity just check it okay so first of all calculate a1 and take the square root and whatever the values be with you so check it uh, with respect to 2e it should be more than that so next comes our conditions in fourth step once b and n is with you once the value of e is with you then what you can do you can check the condition that for the movement case the base plate subjected to the movements which case is applicable whether it is case 1 it is case 2 or case 3 so your eccentricities let's suppose we talk about case 1 if it is less than n by 6 you have to design by use by uh, following the step number 6 and 7 later steps after five number step 6 and 7 but if not then you have to move to step number 
okay and followed after the step number eight we will check whether it is step case number two or case number three okay so first of all we will discuss case one okay when your eccentricities are less than n by six so this will be your case number one for the movement base plates so for that it's very simpler uh, steps left with us in which we have to calculate the f1 and if f1 is greater than fp you have to increase the plate size and revise the calculation okay so the bearing stresses the concrete strength should be greater than the bearing uh, stress required under the base plate with the base plate uh, material and the concrete foundation material okay so this will be your uh, bearing stress so your bearing stress should be uh, less than the required uh, the uh, applied or you can say the required concrete strength so you are increase in the plate size if if it is not your f1 is greater than fp then you have to increase the plate sizes and you have to revise the section so your bearing stresses should be more uh, than the uh, the required stresses so those are going to give you the proper resistance against the bearing stresses so your plate sizes you have to revise if this is the particular condition So step number seven, you have to calculate the cantilever length M and you have to calculate the bending moments acting on one millimeter strip of the plate MPLU due to the bearing pressures. Further calculate the required plate thickness. Bearing stresses at the critical section. So in detail, I'm not going to be discuss that uh, how to calculate this FC and what is this FC? Uh, FC is obviously we have already discussed. This is the bearing stress just under the movement plate at an overhanging distance of M okay so the critical section that is small m so that we have been discussing in calculating the movement uh, for the purely axially loads when we have been calculating the thickness of the base plate there we have discussed this m uh, distance this is the overhang critical section this is the cantilever length that is considered the critical one so this cantilever length m we have to first of all calculate and then corresponding to that we have to calculate the bending moments acting on one millimeter strip of the plate mplu due to this bearing pressure this bearing pressure you have to consider just starting at that particular point and within that particular area so the the bending moments due to only this particular overhang part of the base plate we have to consider okay so in this way we need this ordinate to calculate the bending moments this fc so in this way we are going to be calculating fc this is simple geometry of this uh, all of the um, stresses those are acting under the base plate so in this particular way you can very easily understand by this figure given over here okay so just go through it and see that how to calculate this fc once fc is with you f1 we have already calculated m is already we have calculated so all of the values are with us so mplu is very now easy to calculate now for only this particular uh, area as, as i have told you we are going to be calculating the mplu so mplu will be the moments produced by the rectangular area and the triangular area we are going to be divide this whole uh, stress applied under the on, on this cantilever part of the base plate uh, from the bottom of the base plate this is going to be sub subdivided into uh, two forces or two stresses those ones in the form of rectangular area and one in the form of triangular so we are going to be adding up to get the total movements uh, by the base plate that is acting over there so here also in this figure uh, for the rectangular area the point of application of the force uh, that is acting under the base plate uh, on this overhanging part and also uh, the point of application of for the triangular area uh, this is also going to be mentioned so that you are going to be calculating very easily uh, the movements uh, separately and then adding it up Now once MPLU is with you, so what you can do, you can calculate the base plate thickness very easily. You have the formula of TP for MPLU divided by 0 0.90 FY. So you have to keep this formula with you. It's very important. Okay. And once you will be finalizing your case. So this TP is going to give you the thickness of the base plate for the case one where your eccentricities are less than uh, N by six. So if this is the particular case, till this point uh, step number seven that was step number seven till step number seven you are now can report your results for the moment base plate case one where eccentricities are less than equal to six in terms of b into n into uh, finally we have tp okay so these three design parameters are with us 
after calculating our thickness of the base plate by using this equation. So we are getting B into N into TP. Okay, so in this way we are going to be finalizing uh, our results. So this is for eccentricities less than N by 6. So now from step number 8, what we have to do the either case, okay, mean we have eccentricities greater than N by 6. For that you have to calculate the small L that will be the larger of N and N dash just like an axially loaded base plate with the pressure F1 and the you have to find the TP as under. So in this particular case another thickness of the plates you have to find out by using this cantilever length that was the small L. Previously for the purely uh, axially loaded base plate we have calculated our L larger of M N and N dash. Okay, M, N, N, N dash. But now what we have to do, we have to calculate another TP that will be the larger or to um, based on the critical length L, that will be the larger of just N and uh, N dash, not M. Okay, and the rest of the formula will remain same. So this will give you the thickness of the base plate. The recommended minimum value of TP is for stiffness is L by 4 that you have to keep in your mind. Uh, so continuing with the procedure step number nine if your eccentricities are greater than n by two uh, then anchor bolts are required and even for the case two when our eccentricities are greater than uh, or equal to n by uh, greater than uh, or equal to n by six and less than n by two still we are going to be for case two uh, we required anchor bolts we are actually not requiring an anchor bolts but uh, practically uh, we are going to be provide the minimum anchor bolts. So for case number two and case number uh, three, we are going to be follow uh, after the step number eight. In the last slides, we have discussed this in step number eight, uh, the TP. Okay, so based on L. So this small L was the larger of N dash and N. So keep this TP value with you for case number two and case number three. Okay, so this is going to be called as TP1. Okay, so keep this with you in step number 8. Now, another thickness of the place we have to calculate based on the movement uh, within the base plate. And we will see now later on in the later on steps that how we can calculate that. So, keeping on the stresses in uh, to calculate F1, how to calculate it. For that, we have already discussed in detail the formula for the capital A and then how to calculate our uh, capital A value to input in this formula of T to calculate Tu. That is the total force in the anchor bolts, tens tensile force you can say. The distance capital A is then calculated using the applicable equation using F1 equal to Fp. So in the very first step we have calculated Fp that is the bearing stress. So as in you can say assumption or very you can say initial um, uh, calculations we can assume our Fp that we have been calculating equal to F1 and then later on if our B and N are not going to be satisf satisfying then we can re uh, you can say uh, revise that but uh, for the first uh, assumption or the first trial it will be very suitable that the FP you are taking equal as F1. Okay, so your distance A can be calculated by using this formula and we have already discussed in detail this formula is going to give you the two quadratic roots of your uh, this equation and in this equation only this capital F is unknown. This capital F can be calculated by using this formula that will be F1 B and dash divided by 2. So once this uh, capital F is known to you, you can input in this equation and you can get this capital A and this capital A you can input in this equation to get uh, Tu that is actually the tensile uh, force, the total force uh, in the anchor bolts. So it will be F1 AB divided by 2 minus Pu. So all of the values are with you. You can input in this equation and you can get your Tu. Now based on M cantilever length, again the MPLU is required to calculate and finally the TP. That TP that you we will calculate based on the small M cantilever length and then later on calculating the movements uh, produced by the base plate uh, that will be uh, that will going to give you this TP value that will be TP2 now. TP1 we have already calculated in step number 8 and now we will calculate the TP2 the second uh, thickness of the base plate. Now further this M and MPLU is going to be calculating based on two different criteria. The first criteria design criteria will be the movement from the 
plate bearing site that will be MPLU. This MPLU you can say as one, okay, later on. The two movements we will calculate depending upon two different criteria and this two different criteria are going to give you the two different values of MPLU. Out of these two movements, the maximum one will give you, uh, be used to calculate this TP2, the thickness of the base plate based on the movements from the base from the base plate so from the base plate we have now two components but the two you can say factors those are can be calculate uh, can be produce the movement uh, in the base plate that will be the first one from the plate bearing side and second one may be from the tension board side okay so now starting from the first criteria or the first factor that the movements in the base plate can be caused due to the bearing stresses uh, uh, that will be in upward direction that is may, may cause the movement in the base plate in this particular direction and once the tension bolt be there then the bolt is responsible to produce the movements in the uh, in this particular direction so we are going to be uh, calculate uh, uh, both of the movements that is going to be caused the um, bending in the base plate so the first of all uh, small m so the formula will remain same n minus 0.95 d divided by 2 so case one when you have a capital a that you have calculated earlier in step number 10 that is uh, greater than m if this is the particular case then this figure is going to show you uh, this particular reality so here you have your m this blue line is going to show you the location of the small m the cantilever line and your a comes out to be greater than m if this is the particular case then you can calculate your fc Okay, just this particular ordinate of the bearing stress at the point where the cantilever lens is just started. So this will going to give you this ordinate. So by just solving this triangle, simply by using the similar triangular rule, this is geometry of these stresses under the base plate, you can calculate this FC. Now, if once the FC has been calculated, then you can calculate your MPLU. So you have all other ordinates. F1 is the maximum ordinate of the bearing stress at the extreme edge of the base plate. Here you can see this is your F1. Okay, so this ordinate will give you the F1 minus FC. And you can further divide this uh, whole uh, stress area into rectangular region. Okay, and the triangular region. So this triangular region and rectangular region is further uh, is going to be shown in these two figures later on and then again the point of application of the forces are shown over here to calculate your movements. So the similar rule we have going to be applied and this MPLU you can calculate by using this equation. So after calculating the movement from the base plate size, now we are required to calculate the movement from the anchor bolt side, MPLU. Okay. So this MPLU is based on uh, this fact that once you are going to be having the tension bolts on the tension phase of the base plate, then how the stress distribution uh, uh, take place. And according to the stress distribution, how you can calculate the movement from the base plate side. Okay. So that movement will be tensile in nature, mean from top to bottom so the plate width over which the anchor board force is spread is assumed based on load spreading out of at 45 degrees angle towards the critical plane as shown in the figure one this width is equal to the distance from the bolt of to the critical section for each bolt l1 plus the smaller of this distance and the bold edge distance okay so what are these l1 and bold edge distance and how to get this we total effective width for the anchor bolts to calculate the movements on that particular effective width okay so we will be keeping in that particular limit where the we or the effective width has been calculated and only in that particular area we will calculate the movement under the uh, over the base plate so this is going to give you the uh, final you can say the value for mplu to calculate the movement from the anchor bolt side so first of all we have to get understand the, how the stress distribution occurs for, from the anchor bolts towards the column. So if this is the one side of uh, tension phase side of the base plate, it, we are going to be marking. And here we have two anchor bolts, the first one and the second one. So these anchor bolts are going to give you the stress distribution, the spreading of the stress. This is the spreading of the anchor bolt force on the bearing plate. So this force, tensile force is going to be spread 
towards the flange towards the column beam column in this particular direction and this is considered equal to the 45 degrees this this stress distribution or the force distribution if you are going to be draw a perpendicular from the center of the bolt it is going to give you a 45 degree angles so in this particular direction or the tensile force distribution occurs from the tensile from the bolt side so this w is the bolt edge distance that we have been discussing bolt edge distance mean the distance from the center of the bolt towards the to the edge of your base plate this is the small w and now what is l1 this l1 is the uh, horizontal distance from the center of the tension tensile uh, the tension bolt towards the intersection point of the force distribution the tensile force distribution from the bolt to the line that has been passing through the center of the flange of the beam column here you can see this particular line that is passing through the center of the flange so your intersection point will be like this and this intersection point will give you this distance l1 starting from this intersection point towards the center of the bolt this will be your l1 okay the same you can have the perpendicular of this triangle that from the center line that is passing through the flange of the beam column to the center of the bolt so if you are going to be considering it in this direction it will be l1 okay so in this particular case the l1 and w the definition has been given now how the effective width has been calculated this effective width will be equal to l1 plus this small w this small w will be going to give you the answer or you can say the value that will be l1 plus this particular distance okay now this we on l1 on one side will be this one if you are going to be starting from the start of the tensile distribution towards the flange side so it will be this point this point will be to the center of this uh, tension bolt will be l1 then later on further if you are proceeding towards the edge of the base plate now we are going to be having two cases on one side we may have w we may have l1 so there are two you can say possibilities that this force distribution line can intersect the center line passing through the flange of the column within the base plate or it may intersect this line outside the base plate if it is intersecting within the base plate then this particular distance will be equal to l1 okay and if the same l1 is like this mean going out of the base plate it may be less than w it may be larger than w if it will be less than w or larger than w whatever the case is the smaller value you have to consider to use in the formula of effective width and corresponding to that you have to calculate the mplu and in this formula of mplu you have in denominator nb your nb is the number of the bolts on the tension phase side only not only the whole total number of the bolts mean on the other side you may have two bolts more but only the tension bolt side these number of the bolts you have to consider now we have mplu equal to this formula so nb is the number of the bolts on the tension phase as we have discussed earlier so the maximum value of mplu out of the above two values two criteria that we have been discussed is used to calculate the required base plate thickness so out of these two criteria movement from the anchor bolt side and the movement from the plate bearing side we are calculating the larger of these two as mplu2 so out of mplu1 and mplu2 the larger is going to be calculated again as our to to calculate our tp value so i have told you that mplu you have calculated based on your cases whether your case is when you have a is greater than m or you have a less than 1 so for your corresponding or respective case whatever the value you are calculating that will be equal to mplu okay mean either this or this so you may be having a case either uh, a is greater than m1 or a is less than m1 
so any one of the case for your uh, problem statement be there so whatever the case is for that particular you are calculating your mplu that will be mplu 1 the first value of mplu the second value of mplu will be the larger of your movement from the anchor bolt side and the movement from the plate bearing side so that will be mplu 2 now again larger of these two mplu 1 and mplu 2 out of these two the you have to use in the formula to calculate tp so this will be 4 mplu divided by 0.9 fy okay so this will be going to give you the final thickness of the base plate so you have calculated the thickness of the base plate based on mplu and in the step number 8 as i have told you you have to calculate the thickness of the base plate based on small l value that was your tp1 as i have told you now based on mplu you have calculated tp2 the second value of tp2 out of these two the larger will be the final tp that you can use to calculate the thickness of the base plate